Welcome to Haltech Elite NSP Training Part 56. This training tutorial, we're going to be exploring setting up our vehicle speed and wheel speed sensors in conjunction with our gear detection option so that we have both speed and gear as runtime values for logging purposes as well as for programming purposes. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at setting up our vehicle speed sensors and our gear detection within our Haltech Elite using our NSP software. Now we always want to have at least one speed sensor source wired into our Haltech so we can use vehicle speed as a reference either for data logging purposes or going into tables and assigning things like at our idle control target RPM. This is based on vehicle speed. So we can use that runtime value of vehicle speed in all kinds of tables or parameters and logging. So we always want to have a speed sensor source. Now you can use multiple speed sensor sources if you want to wire in individual wheel speeds, which is definitely the way to go if you have that available to you. Um, and then by assigning that and having a vehicle speed sensor source, we can take things a step further and use that for gear detection, actually set up so that when you shift, the whole deck's going to recognize that as a different gear and it'll actually count and represent that gear accurately. Then we can use gear for all kinds of logging purposes or runtime values into tables such as doing a boost by gear table. Anything gear based we can reference accurately by having that gear ratio detection set up and configured. So we're going to look in this tutorial at configuring our vehicle speed sensors and configuring our gear detection. We have to do vehicle speed source first and then we can do gear detection. So let's jump in here and take a look at where we can find how to assign our vehicle speed sensor source and then calibrate it. And then we can go into gear detection and go and configure and set that up. So the very first thing we need to do is move from our idle control window right here and go over into our main window. From here, we're gonna go into our navigation screen and then we're gonna move here under our sensors area. Under our sensors tab, we wanna go down here and move down this left column and go here to our vehicle speed sensor. We're gonna to toggle this on. Now, whether you're going to be wiring in an actual vehicle speed sensor from your transmission or wheel speed sensors or a GPS-based speed input or even a drive shaft speed input, you want to go and turn on your option here. You need to go and configure this so that we can go into our menu here and actually access the point where we can specify what type of speed source we're, we're working with. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a quick reboot here, and then I'm going to go scroll down my window all the way to the bottom here under vehicle speed. Let's go ahead and extrapolate this. Now here, the main source, this is going to point to what we actually want to reference for our channel based on vehicle speed. So we can have multiple different speed inputs to our Haltech, but we're only going to use one of those assigned right here for the actual reading for vehicle speed. So what do we have for options here? Well, drivetrain would be typically a transmission-based speed source. That's what I have on my vehicle that I'm actually going to be wiring in and showing you that on a Honda Civic. We have our wheel speed sensors here. We have our GPS-based speed if you're using a GPS device. We have undriven wheels, driven wheels, and average all. So the undriven wheels would be if you have two undriven wheel speed sensors wired in. So if you're front wheel drive, front wheels would be your driven wheels, rear wheels would be your undriven wheels. Now if we have that configuration, typically speaking, the undriven wheels would be the better option. And what it's gonna do is take the average of both the undriven wheels. The driven wheels, if you have that option, would be taking the average of both wheel speed sensors on your driven wheel speed source, and average all would be averaging all of your wheel speed sensors for the vehicle. So you have some options. Usually if I'm choosing anything, it's going to either be drivetrain sensor or undriven wheels. Um, you can still choose undriven wheels. I do want to mention this. If you only have one undriven wheel source, so if you only have one of them, you can choose that as the option. Driven wheels, you can do the same thing. So it could be one wheel speed sensor that you signed uh, for that source. And our derived channels here, we can see that this is gonna allow you to choose driven wheel speed sensors calculation method, undriven speed sensor calculation method. Right now it's set to average. You can do individual wheels. So we can take a look here at how to configure that in just a little bit. Let's jump back in here. So in my case, I'm gonna leave it on drivetrain because I'm setting up here in this first example how to set up a vehicle speed sensor from a transmission case. This is usually a more common option for most vehicles. So drivetrain is what I'm gonna have it configured on. Then here I'm gonna turn on my drivetrain sensor. We can see it's toggled on right here. Now when we do this, we can find here that under the calibration, we have a drivetrain sensor pulses per mile that needs to be calibrated. So we have a pulse coming out of our sensor based on the pickup wheel 
mount it inside the transmission case that might be four teeth, eight teeth, 12 teeth, 20 teeth. It's gonna send a pulse even every time a tooth passes up across it. And we need to represent those pulses to translate that into miles, to translate that into a speed based on the configuration for the transmission. So based on the number of teeth and based on um, other additional factors such as our final drive ratio. We can actually figure this pulses per mile value out. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.